Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Serial, and welcome to Cherry Witched, which is a horror game, and the sequel to Berry Witched. And in this game we visit a nice Cherry Witch's Cafe to get some delicious pie, and nothing will go wrong. Do you know what makes up a witch? They're a bit different from humans, although they often make their form look similar to them. Cherries? Every witch is born from pure magic. More specifically, a sort of magic nucleus. Almost like a pearl. More and more layers of magic build up until a witch can take form. During a witch's childhood, they will find their magic specialty. Uh, that's the thing they're most magically proficient in. It takes less energy for them to do that thing than normal witch, you see? Your, your magic specialty is going to be cherries. Magical energy. It isn't infinite. When a witch runs out of magic, they die, letting out a big burst of energy themselves back into the universe. Sort of a cycle of life thing, you know? Bakuka! Of course, wizards... <laughs> oh man, Bakuka. Of course, witches can share magical energy with just about anything. Food, drinks, clothes, accessories, you name it. And it can probably give you a boost. But the problem with witches is that we're all selfish. Many people will do whatever it takes to lengthen their lifespans and consume as much energy as possible. Berry Witch wasn't selfish. That's where I come in. The name's Inquiry. I'm a detective witch for the Council of Witches. Recently I've been investigating a series of disappearances that I think are the work of a serial killer. Maybe even a group of them. It's tough work. Interviewing families and friends for clues alone can be hard on the soul. Recent leads I got ended up leading me right into a corner too. But despite the chaos of the world I'm in, there's always one place I can depend on for normalcy. Taking a deep breath in, I took a step forward through the doors to a sweet little shop called Cherry Pie's Cafe. Once inside, I became... What? I'm pretty sure this is the place, right? This, this is the culprit here. I mean, maybe there's a twist. But like, right on your nose, detective. Once inside, I became engulfed in a feeling of warmth and belonging. That's just the effect this place has on you. The common music provided the perfect peaceful ambience for people to sit and enjoy a nice cup of coffee and a slice of the world's most delicious pie. The chairs were always nice, always clean. It was perhaps the only place I was able to actually relax during my free time. Mmm, you can taste the suffering souls. Well, hi there, sugar pie. That little lady is a cherry on top, quite literally. Your... your hat looks kind of like a butt. Her name is Cherry Pie. Cherry for short. She runs the cafe with an upbeat smile and warm personality. When there was downtime in the cafe, she would often come over and talk with to me with a cheery expression on her face and a slice of pie in her hands. Truly, this gal is something special. Morning, Cherry. Things been slow today? Slower than a snail in a foot race! It's a relief to finally see a friendly face. <laughs> Will you be having your usual slice of pie and coffee today? <laughs> you know me well. Yes, ma'am. Give me a little extra serving of suffering on the side. I like my coffee with a little more suffering in it, you know what I mean? Sliding the usual payment over the countertop, Cherry made quick work in making my usual order. So, how's work been treating you? <sighs> not that great. Aw, oh, is that case not going well, copper? Got led straight into a never dead end. Every time I think I'm a step closer to figuring out the truth, Something pops up and puts me three steps back. Well now, that's no good at all. I'm awfully sorry, Inquiry. I know I'm no fancy detective and all, but I am here if you need to let out your frustrations. You look so tired. You really shouldn't be overworking yourself like this, you know? Cherry Pie scolded me, pouring two cups of coffee, and I ain't enough. Just the way we both liked it. Hers sweet and full of creamer and suffering, mine with hints of pumpkin spice and cinnamon, and a little bit of suffering. Ah, oh, you worried about me, Cherry? 
Very much so. I don't know what I'd do without my favorite customer visiting me every day. Hee <laughs> hee. Can I make this go transparent? Let me see. Uh, maybe not. I'm not sure. Sometimes there's like a button so you can like see the CG behind it easier. She brought over a tray of our goodies and set them down on my usual table in the corner. Far away from all the other empty tables and chairs. Well, there's no need to worry. There's nothing in the world that could stop me from visiting you. Or how tired this old soul becomes. Is that a promise? Because if so, I'm holding you to it. If you're curious, this is also a multi-ending game, like Berry Witch, by the way. It's a promise, Cherry Pie. Sorry, but you're stuck with me. <laughs> you say I'd like it's a bad thing. <laughs> I'll gladly be stuck with you any day. Copper. Oh, but anyways. Cherry took a long sip of her drink, pushing my cup towards me. What's been happening in your case, if you don't mind me asking? I paused for a moment, staring at the pastry chef in front of me with a puzzled expression. What case? Jerry, you know I'm not supposed to share classified information. The council would kick my ass if I did. But I'm, oh, so curious. I can tell it's really stressing you out, sugar pie. It might be good to talk about. Even if it's in vague terms, you know, like, maybe you're getting a little bit closer, maybe you, you think maybe it's a cherry witch, maybe? Rubbing my temples, I thought about everything I had witnessed, everything I had endured, everything I kept balled up for so long. Fine, but I can't say much. No matter how much or how little, I'm always here to listen. I'm looking for... someone. Someone who did a lot of bad things. They planned a lot of false clues. A lot of things were merely placed to waste my time, which it did. God, I'm really a worthless detective. Now, now, don't say that. You've got a brilliant mind! Inquiry? Thanks, Cherry, it's just... Honestly, like, the twist would be if, like, if the witch is not the killer at this point. I think it must be related to some sort of group or organization. Everything feels so carefully planned out. Even the smallest things that could be thought of as a slip-up had been planned all along. There are quite a few underground groups of powerful witches. Those witches, they don't exactly follow the rules of the Council of Witches, you see. I took a long sip of my drink. My mind began to race anxiously with all the possibilities. I see. The Everlasting was always well known for their attention to detail, so it wouldn't be surprising. I didn't mention the Everlasting. The Everlasting is a gang of sorts, typically behind organized crime that often ends deadly. That group has been dodging the Council of Witches for centuries. There isn't any way, right? Cherry, what do you know? Give me my cool, I pretend to not hear it slip up and continue on with the conversation. Indeed. Shite. Might be able to get some information out of her. I play my cards right. Though honestly, I really didn't want to do any work right now. Here's the problem. A woman which recently has gone missing. Sources say she was relatively young, too. She disappeared last week after nounding in this very town. It's been troublesome narrowing down a place, however. There is a chance Cherry Pie could have had something to do with it. Ironic. True fruit witches involved on the opposite sides of potentially deadly crime. Um... I have no idea how to get to the endings. I usually like trying to do the bad ending first. But we'll, we'll, we'll see. Do kids come here often? Let's be unsubtle. Kids? Where did this come from? I we'll just figured based on the place's cutesy appearance, that would attract more kids. Haha, <laughs> I think you would have known by now who likes coming here based on the amount of time you spend here, no? To tell the truth, the only kid I see frequently enough to call regular here would be my little sister. Haha. <laughs> ah, I see. They know you had a sister. Ah, 
my little Lottie. She's grown up awfully fast. That'll, that I'll save for certain. I'll have to introduce you to. She would love you. I'd love to meet the little lady. <laughs> what school is your sister in? Oh, she got accepted into the lottery for Incantation Academy. Not too long ago. Really now? Yeah, that's funny. I live right by that school. Really? Well then, maybe I should visit you before picking her up someday. I like that quite a lot, actually. Let me go to that school. There's too many coincidences. Dang it! We're doing too good of a job! We need to do a bad job to get a bad ending. Have you seen anything suspicious? Say, have you seen anything suspicious around this area, Cherry? Everything seems safe. Goodness me, are you worried about me? <laughs> maybe I am. Well, now that you mentioned it, some people I used to see come by haven't been coming as much anymore. Coffee addicts missing their daily cup gets concerning. But maybe I'm just overthinking it. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh. Do you have any names for anyone you're concerned about? Hmm, not off the top of my head, no. But I'm sure it's just me being silly. No need to worry about that. Damn it. No matter what I do or say, it's just running me back into a corner again. Is something wrong, Sugar Pie? No, no. Don't worry about Cherry. You have any boxes or bags something I could take this out in? Yeah, but you're leaving already? You didn't even take a bite. Sorry, Cherry. I just got a lot on my mind right now, and I don't feel like eating children. I'll see you again soon, though. Cherry packed away my pie slice, trying to force a smile. I felt bad, but there's no way I can keep a normal conversation right now. My mind is too clouded with work. Will do. See you later, Cherry. She's acting a bit weird just now, wasn't she? It's probably just my inner paranoia. Ending 1 out 6 to go. Any grumpy customers lately? Oh, darling, you wouldn't believe it. Some people just don't know how to be polite. Huh. The other day, my little sis brought in one of her school friends. Little sister. I didn't know Cherry had a little sister. More importantly, though, her sister may be the same age as Lemon Witch. It could be possible that they know each other. I tried so hard to be nice, I really did. But this kid, she just had such a sour attitude. I am not sour! I know what you mean. Kids these days really ought to line up more. Exactly. Or at least don't give workers just doing their job a weird look and sass for no reason. Huh. A kid with a sour attitude. What school is your sister in? Can we skip that? Do anything in these past few weeks? I realize most of the time when we come in here, we mostly talk about me. What have you been up to? Oh, that's silly. You talk about me plenty. Hmm, I really can't think of anything exciting. Oh, I have been testing out this new recipe for a cherry brownie recently. Maybe next time you stop by, I could give you a bite. You'll be my little taste tester. Brownie, you say? Damn, I do anything to eat a cherry brownie right now. That sounds delicious. But the information didn't help me at all. Did you hear what the Everlasting did yesterday? Huh? What did they do? Some jackass claiming to be with the Everlasting tried robbing one of the council members. This wasn't true at all, actually. I just wanted to see if Cherry would have any sort of strange reaction. Call the hunch, I suppose. Cherry, not feeling to disappoint, looked like she was about to choke on her own drink. Really? You gotta be kidding! To do something like that? She took a deep breath in. That's just... horrible! Awful! Did anyone get hurt? Did anyone get caught? Anyone leading back to me? Thankfully, no. In prison, the sucker behind it, though. Cherry looked like she was about to say something, but quickly closed her mouth. I picked up on one thing about Cherry, it's that she wasn't much for hesitating. Something here is obviously wrong. Just talking to Cherry like this felt like the world's most casual interrogation. 
I was finding out a lot of things. Things that added up, things that made me have more questions. Luckily, I have the time necessary to get a bit more information out of her. Sugar pie, you haven't touched your slice yet. Is something the matter? Trey looked concerned. Shad, I can't ever catch on to me. I laughed it off, telling her I just enjoyed her company. So much, I've forgotten to eat. Meanwhile, grabbing my fork to eat some good old pie. I took a bite, the cherry flavor filling my very senses. It doesn't taste like a normal pie. Oh, no! Did you, uh, try a new recipe for your pies? You know, use a, use a different grade of child? <laughs> you can say that. Tastes that strange. Tastes a little lemony. I'm starting to feel strange, dizzy, discombobulated even. No, I was beginning to grow drowsier and drowsier by the moment. You... you didn't... Bonk. Uh... My head was pounding the second I regained consciousness. Why is your... <laughs> saw... cherry themed? Before I could even try and get these old muscles to move, I realized I was tightly wrapped in some sort of rope. No. Could these be vines? Cherry vines. Ah! There you are! Turned my head, I was greeted by the face of my captor. My instinct was to use defensive magic. A simple blast of energy to push her away from me. Yet the second I tried, nothing happened. I didn't speck of sparkles, dust, or any of that crap. You. What did you do to me? Oh, nothing serious. I promise. I just slipped something in your pie. The fellas have been working on a magic blocker. I say it's even stronger than the ones you council of witches folk use. A pinch of that, a little bit of mild tranquilizers, and lots of sugar and cherries to hide it all. I mix it all up and ta-da, I have you right where I want you. Are you gonna kill me? Are you going to kill me? Oh golly, no, of course not. I just want to have a little chat, that's all. What about? But how you're killing witches? You're... you're part of the everlasting, aren't you? Oh, don't look at me like that. They're really not so bad. The criminals, Cherry Pie. Killers, thieves. And now it seems you are, too. <laughs> Your words hurt, Inquiry. And after everything I've done to try and save you, too. No, no, I gotta have patience. Soon you understand. Soon we'll be together and happy for all of eternity. No. What? You've always been my favorite customer, Inquiry. Being in my little friend group, it's a necessity for me. A life of chaos and torment with no end. This is my fate in this world, I'm afraid. But you were always kind, always warm to me. Whenever you came in that life, I once had paused. I was able to be a normal witch. Just a cute little cafe owner flirting with a lovely lady. Baking pies, making people smile. With you, I finally feel like I can live the life of my dreams. I can't wait for you to come by only on your breaks anymore. I want you to be able to call this place your home. I want to be able to call myself your wife one day. I'll make you coffee every morning. Just the way you like it. I'll give you kisses every night. Together we can be the perfect picturesque couple. Living a happy normal life, you know, harvesting organs. That's all I want. Do you tie up and drug everyone you ask out on dates, Cherry Pie? <laughs> no, you're the first. The only. Oh, great, that, that, that's, that's... That's absolutely wonderful. I, I feel... I feel like I'm very special. My... One and only. This girl has absolutely lost her mind. Look, I'm a... Uh, flattered, but... But! There was a look of fear in her eyes before I could even finish my sentence. Her eye began twitching as I took my next breath. I really should be careful with my words here. I'm sure you're wonderful, but your workplace and my workplace... 
It just clashes a lot, you know? Look, just let me out of here and we can chat about this more. <laughs> I'm sure you'll find that they don't clash as much as you think. For an organization that claims to be care so much about life, nothing was really done until your little inventor witch friend went missing, uh... What about the spider witch? The lily pad witch? No one cared when they disappeared. Not one of you was sent out to look for them. The council of witches only cares about those with specialties they deem important. If you find numbers along the way, it's just bonus points. You are all just as indifferent to the death of others as I am. <laughs> A ringing noise can be heard from the other room. Ah, another customer is here. I'll be back shortly, okay, my darling? You'll have more time to make it all over. Cherry Pie skipped out the door. A clicking noise behind her indicated she l locked it shut. Using the opportunity placed in front of me, I started to try to bend and break the vines holding my wrist captive. Twisting them off was a struggle, I'll admit, but nothing I haven't dealt with before. Once my hands were freed, my next move was to cut the rest of the vines off using a knife and I mean a knife in my... Damn it. She took all my belongings out of my pockets. Of course. My communicator was in there along with my other tools. So much for being able to call for help. I'll have to find out where she put them before I'm able to make my escape. Awkwardly looking on the rest of the vines, I was able to get a better look at the room. It truly was near his sight. There must be something in here that could help unlock the door. Gameplay! What is this place? You're in a little teeny tiny room I like to call the Slice and Dice Room. But don't worry, sweetie pie. There'll be no slicing nor dicing here today. Then why bring me here? Oh, you were getting really close to solving your case, see? My friends have been keeping tabs on you. They were going to take care of you themselves, but, well, I managed to convince them to have a little chat with you instead and try to bring you to our side. What? I've seen one of these before. They're magic cooling shelves. She must be using them to keep the body parts cold. She cleaned off the blood. I wonder why. Curious to step closer to observe the being. It's a doll. Why well, have such a gruesome doll on a cooling shelf? She's making dolls! The most eye-catching thing in this room by far had to be the operating table. The disgusting mess of blood and smell only proved to show how sloppy Cherry was with her work. So it's true. All those witches really did die by Cherry's hands. I doubt they went peacefully. Or souls. A bloody pie fumed circular saw. Yikes. Damn it, it's locked tight. Hmm. In every case I've ever seen evolving the everlasting, there's always some sort of strange puzzle in these sort of hidden rooms. Apparently, according to my sources, they have a bad habit of accidentally locking each other in. Damn idiots. Regardless, if Cherry is in the everlasting, then there must be one of those puzzles in here that can unlock the door from the inside. The giant chest in the room caught my eye. I'm not sure what could be in here, but it's worth a shot checking. Some sort of... legs. Lily dressed, life size doll legs. Interesting. There has to be something in here that can help me escape. Rummaging for the tools and cleaning products, I found what looked to be a pale arm at the bottom of the box. They assembled the doll. Once I managed to drag the arm out of the box, it was clear to see the arm was a fake. Plastic. Almost like it's some sort of mannequin prop. Huh. Assemble the doll. I have a doll arm and a pair of doll legs. Maybe something will happen if I put them back in place. Upon placing the doll limbs in their correct places, a strange noise rang through the room. Simple enough, I suppose. With quick swift movements, I unlocked the door. The sooner I get out of here, the better.
exiting in that nightmare of a room. I immediately stumbled into a kitchen of sorts. This must be where Cherry Pie makes her pies and other stored baked goods. The eerie silence of the room contributed to the atmosphere of the impending doom. But listening closer, I realized it wasn't entirely silence. I heard faint feminine crying sounds coming from somewhere within this room. It almost sounds like a child. So that's probably... Lemon. But, we're gonna go for some of the bad endings first, if we can. Focus on escape. If I drop priority, should be finding my communicator. Anyone else trapped in here will get rescued too. There actually is some minor logic to that. That's actually not completely wrong. Walking through the door leading out of the kitchen, I found myself in what looked like a cherry themed waiting room. Why'd that be the right choice? Odd. Wonder what you need a waiting room for. I couldn't get the sound of crying on my ears, even though it was far away from where I first heard it. I felt guilty. Did I really do the right thing? Is what I'm doing right? It echoed in my brain, being louder and louder. Gripping my pointed ears, I desperately tried to get the noises out of my head. Just stop it! I'm doing everything I can! My feet stumbled over themselves since my panic. However, I was able to quickly catch myself on the cherry theme lamp. Click. The lamp made a noise. The sound of that I broke it. Rumbling sounds coming from the wall made me aware that the lamp was designed to be a switch. I was met with a hole in the wall where the painting once, painting once stood. Normally I would use my magic to detect any traps or triggers, but seeing as I don't have any of that now. Hesitantly, I crawled through the tight space. I paused my crawl for a moment, hearing peculiar noises from the other side of the wall. Sloshing, chewing, animalistic-like noises tearing into... something. Oh, how I miss this. Hi. <laughs> Cherry pie. <laughs> I know I shouldn't, but maybe just a few more bites. I'll make the feeling last longer. Flesh, blood. This moment was so strong, it filled my senses even from all the way back here. I feel so... so refreshed, so perfect. Bless the beginners for revigorating my soul. Bless the beginners. Cherry wasn't eating meat pie. She was consuming a witch hole. Nicholas and all from the sounds of it. Laughter reverberated throughout the entire building. Oh my, what a mess. I have to clean this all up before I see my beloved again. <laughs> I wouldn't want to scare her. It's a bit too late for that, buddy. Silence. Jerry must have left to clean herself up. With that attitude crawling my way through the feeling more uneasy than before. A secret room secret. Room with a lone file cabinet in the middle. There could be useful information in there. I have to look through it. Rummaging through the file cabinet, I found some peculiar notes. From the beginning there were seven witches. The witches of fire, war, land, artisans, war, mind, and heart. These witches were all called the beginners. The beginners held immense magical power and paved the way for all of which kind to of flourish. They eventually formed into a group that called themselves the Council of Witches. They were able to split off parts of themselves in order to create new witches, if us sharing of magical energy became known. Even when the beginners expired one by one, the Council of Witches continued forth in their honor. Their energy still lives on within all of us, after all, in the form of our nucleus. The magical nucleus is the most powerful part of a witch. Harvesting these nuclei and adding it to our own is a direct guarantee to everlasting life. So long as we keep harvesting, we will be everlasting. There's so much more in here. But I should be getting the hell out of here. What am I doing? What should I do? Focus on escape. I didn't stop back there, so I shouldn't stop now. Not the state I'm currently in, anyways. Once help arrives, I'll be able to do much more for investigation of this area. Not seeing an exit, I slowly crawled back the way I came. Cherry! Whoa! Ouch, my head. Why is it always ahead? Opening my eyes, I saw a familiar, unpleasant sight. Not here again. She must have knocked me out back there and dragged me back. Oh, darling. Cherry called out for me in her sickeningly sweet voice. I tried to open my mouth to respond, but... I have no mouth and I must scream! Well, technically it's just a gag, but still. 
Cherry seemed to have plans that involved me not speaking. Is it you, me, Inquiry? Since you were so adamant on escaping, I want to make sure this time you would listen to me. I love you, Inquiry. I'm trying to save your life, whether you like or not. This is the best outcome for you. The Everlasting may seem bad, but I promise you, there are things about the Council you don't know. Muffling groans of protest were all I could say to show my disdain. <laughs> there are a lot of things out there that haven't, they haven't even told you. Things we spent countless cycles trying to dig up. This goes so much deeper than you thought. It's not just a cute girl gone wacko like you think. I'm truly apologetic for getting so... carried away. This is life and death here. I have a family to protect, and I'm trying to protect you too. I know you question the things they've done before, Inquiry. The things they've made you, you do. You're a good person with a kind heart. How... how long have you followed them blindly? Have you ever wondered if you're really on the right side? To tell the truth, I understand that feeling all too well. But when the time comes, we'll have a choice to make. What will you choose? In Ingvorov 6, Confusion. Let's do read more. There might be something important here. More secret base locations. They're just plans we could stop. I have to keep digging. I pull another page from the cabinet. Report 16. The council may be having another competition to choose new members in the next few cycles. The representatives of the land and the mine are growing older. Perfect for harvesting, if we can arrange such a feat. Everlaster Cherry Pie suggested recruiting the mine division investigator inquiry into our ranks. We are allowing her to attempt communication within a controlled environment. If successful, we may just be able to use her to harvest the land and mine representatives nuclei. This... this was bad. An assassination attempt on one of the council members. I frantically dug through the drawer once more. Top secret. If you're reading this, that means you are a member of our preparation community. It's imperative that this document not leave your eyes. Our scientific specialists in the everlasting have found substances within the witch's nuclei to be heavily addictive once ingested. We must take caution and not let the others know until we can find a way to counterbalance its urges. If they find out, it may cause an uproar. This being said, be careful to monitor your own intake. I'm assuming Cherry is not good at this. Remember, Cherry Pie's slices have been the easiest to cover both prevent suspicion and keep daily intake to a minimum. Suggest to anyone who seems to be displaying erratic behavior only one pie slice a day until the urges subside. It just keeps getting worse. If the everlasting is growing this powerful, the very magical balance of our universe could be at stake. We're already on the brink of a magic energy crisis. Taking too much off of yourself is destined to doom the balance of our world. Of course, these bastards wouldn't know that. That explains Cherry's erratic behavior. All she cares about is getting her next fix. She's not entirely there. Uh-oh. Ah. My head. Bonk. The second I grew conscious, I felt a sharp pain near my knees. My mind was foggy. My limbs felt more numb than ever before. What? What's going on? What happened to me? Muffled feminine laughter echoed my ears. Splotches of reds and browns came into my vision. Those mellowed colors soon took form to create a deranged young woman hovering over me. I jolted back. Or at least I tried to. My arms seemed to be restrained by something. Good morning, sleepyhead. Or, well, good afternoon. <laughs> my speech slurred as I tried to scream out, only been muffled by a blunt so tan. Now, now, screaming won't work, so don't even try it. You really broke my heart there, sugar pie. Why did you run away like that and snoop through my things? I thought you loved me too. Was I too scary, too forward? I want to do this right. <laughs> what am I saying? You can't talk right now. Silly me. There's no use fretting over the past anyhow. All I can do is try to protect our future together. Oh, speak of protecting our future. You may notice your lack of legs. 
I struggled to move my head up from what I now realized was a sort of operating table. Looking down confirmed Cherry's words. I was unhappily grieved by the sight of legless nubs wrapped in crimson stained gauze. All I could hear out of my sedated state were groans and mumbles of discomfort. My legs. God damn it, how am I gonna get out of this now? Is there any way out of this? A way to get a leg up on her? Hey now, sugar pie, there's really no need to fret. If you're like this, I can protect you more. The everlasting one to kill you, but I'm saving you. Like how you saved me. Oh, how poetic. If you ran away, you would have been dead for sure. We just can't have that. Besides, it's not like your legs will go to waste. Go to waste? No, she couldn't mean it. They'll be the most delicious addition to the pie ever created. I want this to be special. You're gonna become one of me at long last. Stop trying to eat me, people! It's a dream come true. This meat, it's so special. Nobody used my slice and dicer, but I wanted to save the moment as much as possible, so I used a bone saw instead. Shoot, I may cut off your hands while I'm at it. <laughs> that way you won't go stupid around again. My name is Yoshikage Kira. Decisions, decisions. How's a girl choose? My darling. You're going to be delicious. Ending 3 out of 6. Cannibal Anik. Alright, so now let's investigate. If someone is trapped in here, I have to help them. Yeah, see, like, we have, like, a whole adventure games, like, stage. It's a cookbook with a variety of enchanted desserts. Looks like Cherry wrote in most of the recipes herself. The further I looked into the cookbook, the more morbid the recipes became. I decided to close the book. That looks... so good. Damn, I'm hungry. I don't exactly trust any food in this place anymore, either. Looking at the apron hung up greedily, I could sense something strange about it. I picked up the white cloth and expected it closer, noticing that it was heavier than I thought. Huh? I dug through the pockets, finding an odd magnet of sorts. Strange. Why would there be a magnet in here? I opened the cabinet, but all I met was were an array of pots, pans, and other miscellaneous kitchenware. Even digging deeper into the very back, I found nothing of use. The crying. It's coming from inside the oven. Oh boy. Hello. Is someone in there? Do you need help? I'm in an oven! Of course I need help! I heard a shaken voice speak back to me. Please, let me out of here. I'm scared. Damn it, there's some sort of lock on this oven. Don't worry, miss. I'll get you out of there. Thank you. That poor thing. I better find the key to this fast. It must be somewhere in this room. Probably use the magnet up here. Magnet in hand, I crawled awkwardly on top of the kitchen counter. Once placed nearby the vent, I heard the metallic side of the key ring dragging the keys closer towards me. Nice, I got the keys. Opening up the oven, I saw what I feared. A small witch shoved inside, crying her tiny eyes out. I reached a hand out to her, which she hesitantly took and pulled her out from the oven. Hey. Wait a minute. You're not a lemon. In fact, you look kind of familiar. Thank you. She appeared nervous, which isn't surprising. She looked incredibly young, besides being in this situation without anyone fearful and weary. But now that I think about it, I recall Cherry mentioning having a sister around her age. This couldn't be her, could it? You're welcome. Do you have a name? Um, my name is Strawberry. I just got it. This is a prequel? Also, what's with your family and, like, pies and witches and pies? Witches weren't always born with the names they currently use. Often when a witch gains their specialty, they change their name to match it. I mean, but there could be multiple strawberries out there. It's not always the case a witch will change her name, but it is the most common thing nowadays. Ah, strawberry witch. I see. Congratulations on getting such a sweet specialty. It's nice to meet you, strawberry. My name is Inquiry. I'm with the Council of Witches. How'd you get down here? 
Um, my sister, uh... Is Cherry Pie your sister? Yeah, she's my big sister. Uh, I, um, I'm not actually supposed to be here. I remember hearing strange noises from upstairs. Sister told me never to go down here, but I thought she was struggling with something. I only wanted to help, so I, I went down and found her in the kitchen. Strawberry. Cherry, what, what's happening? I told you not to come down here, sweetie. Go back upstairs, okay? <laughs> I'm in the middle of something very important. That's the last straw. Cherry. Cherry didn't seem like herself. Sure, she was saying nice things, but she looked so scary, I just froze. She was all twitchy, twitchy and giggly, and I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> That's the time to go upstairs now. I, I have important business to attend to. These pies don't bake themselves, do they? But you smell like blood. Are you hurt? Strawberry, upstairs. But I, I, I don't get it. What are you smelling blood if you're not hurt? She laughed a creepy laugh that I'd never heard before. It was so scary. And then she grabbed me and whispered, People like us were meant to be eating strawberry. I'm simply rearranging the circle of life. Boy, I I'm sorry, I'll go back upstairs. Oh, and this day is too important to me. That was when she locked me in the oven. Please let me out, I just wanted to help. I don't like it in here. I promise I'll make sense soon, Strawberry. I kept crying out for help, but nothing happened. Until you helped me. This poor girl. Charlie really lost her mind. She's no longer aware of the severity of her actions. I need to get this child to safety as quickly as possible. Thank goodness the oven was off. I see. You're awfully brave, Strawberry. There's no need to worry anymore, all right? I'll get you out of here and make sure you're safe. I gave her a warm smile and extended my hands and hope to cheer up Strawberry. Okay. Thank you very much, miss. She squeezed onto my hand, taking a deep breath in. I decided to move onwards to the next room. My communicator must be here somewhere. Walking through a door leaning out of the kitchen, we found ourselves in what looked like a cherry fiend waiting room. Oh, is that cherry lemonade? Strawberry's eyes light up, lit up with excitement as she rushed towards a drink dispenser. Um... I wouldn't drink that if I were you. Strawberry, wait. No for sure what's in that. It could be poisoned. Or, you know, made out lemon witches. I put a hand on her shoulder which seemed to stop the girl from getting a drink. It was a sad sight to see the child frowning up at me. I'm better safe than sorry. The suspicion grew in my mind as my eyes scanned the room. It was more pleasing to the eye compared to the last room I encountered. I highly doubt this room is that instant, though. If you use your investigation skills to see if the lemonade's safe, can we know this inquiry? I'm thirsty. Investigation skills? Huh. Well, my magic actually worked right now. We've been out here already. How about after we get out of here, I'll get you a big glass of whatever drink you would like, alright? It's gonna hang in there a little while longer. Really? Do you mean this inquiry? Mm-hmm, of course I do. Unless, of course, you don't you don't want anything. I want something. I want a big glass of lemonade. Oh, or a milkshake with whipped cream and sprinkles. Maybe Cherry would want... Souls? Strawberry stopped talking mid-sentence. A tense silence filled the air. Miss Inquiry, what's gonna happen to Cherry? Is she gonna be okay? My heart sank. I do feel bad for this girl. She's going through so much all at once. She's gonna be okay, kiddo. There's no need to worry. And by okay, I mean she's gonna be dead. Okay in the afterlife. Why was she acting so weird? I don't know. But I promise you we'll do our best to figure out why. Okay. Just as fast as it darkened, the moon and the mirror brightened up again. What a strange little girl. Keep a close eye on a strawberry. I began to search the room myself. Tissues. Oh, well, I've always wanted to read this book. Really now. What's it about? It's about a wolf and a bunny who fall in love. We're the first few pages in my school's library. 
The book itself does seem suspicious. It was supposed to be a gift for Strawberry that Cherry had given up yet. Hmm. You know, I've played a few games where a wolf and a rabbit fall in love. The doors had some pens and paper stashed inside. Nothing of use. Are you sure I can't even have a little sip? Yes, Strawberry, I'm sure. Aw. Looking good. Magic mirror on the wall? Who's the cutest of them all? Manly badass hero. Strawberry seems to be distracted by the mirror. I'll leave her be for now. Investigate after. A beautiful painting of someone holding a cherry. I tried taking it off the wall, but the damn thing wouldn't budge. There's nothing useful here. I approached the door with caution to see if it was unlocked. The second my hand touched the knob, however, I heard a familiar sound coming from the mirror. Howdy! Huh? Cherry! This is a pre mirrored message that goes off when an unauthorized person is sent to this room. See, little, little meat pie? You're not supposed to escape. Meat pie? In the off chance that you were authorized and this was triggered by mistake. Whoopsies, if you know me well, count all the things you love about me. <laughs> Toodaloo, Meat Pie. Don't worry now. You're gonna be part of the everlasting. Um, uh, there is a I'm not quite I'm not sure if it's like robo tentacles or a spider robot. There's only two large metallic arms that rose from a hole where the mirror once was. Oh. They snatched strawberry. Shite, this is bad. Hey, hey, let go of me, please. I don't want to be a meat pie. Strawberry, hang on. I'm going to get you out of there. Or am I? Help, please. The middle arms were squeezing Strawberry tighter and tighter. This is bad. I need to find a way to disable the trap and fast. What was it that Cherry said at the end? That has to be a clue for the ever everlasting members. Um, I feel like there's a bad ending coming up here. I have to do something. Say something. Cherry's clue, and maybe the only chance I have at saving Strawberry. This. I shot in desperation, but... Oh! A loud deafening crunch rang from my ears. Strawberry. No. I... I failed. I couldn't save her. A child died and it was all my fault. Snake, you've created a time paradox. She didn't deserve this. She was so young. Why did it have to be her? It's all my fault. In 206, Strawberry Pie. 19, it's 19! A worrying sound echoed from before the mechanism released Strawberry. Dropping to the ground. The pork had coughed and wheezed. She was practically almost crushed. Strawberry, you okay, kiddo? I spoke kneeling down beside her. She didn't seem to have any major injuries from what I could tell. Meat pies? Were they all? The realization seemed to finally dawn on Strawberry, causing tears to well up in her eyes. Cherry. Cherry made some of those pies special for me. I... D -d did I eat a witch? Yep. She covered her mouth, looking beyond horrified. And much as I want to help Strawberry, it's too dangerous to stay in this room. You've already been here far too long for my liking. What matters most right now is finding a way out of here. You can help. Can you stand? I I think so. Strawberry wumbled to her feet. She looked off balance. It would be bad if she fell somewhere and got even more hurt. Do you want me to carry you? Yes, please. Alright, kiddo, hop on my back. The little one climbed onto my back, clinging her arms around my neck. Like not to comment on how she was nearly choking me, I stood up and made my way through the now unlocked door. A long hallway greeted us. The other side was illuminated with light. To our right, there was a dark corridor that seemed to lead to another room. I was inclined to head towards the bright light, thinking it might be the way out, until I heard a familiar haunting laugh come from that very same direction. 
silently moving towards the other hallway. Ha 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 ha! Was our only choice. One that I wasn't very fond of. Entering the new room, I noticed the amount of closets, cabinets, and other places to store belongings. Then, I maneuvered my way quietly through the storage room, one arm holding up strawberry, and the other searching for the endless drawers, boxes, and cabinets. Aha! I found my communicator. I turned my head to tell the pink-haired child the news, but it was a heartbreaking frown on her face. You okay, kiddo? I just... I don't get it. Last week, me and Cherry were celebrating my specialty day, but now she's... Starby pointed a little finger towards the wall. There I noticed a photograph of two witches side by side pinned with pride. It was bittersweet. Truth be told, I'd actually been able to like Cherry Pie myself. She's hardworking, caring, and a lovely conversationalist. This change in her, it truly did feel uncharistic. Seems to have now puzzled me more than ever. No matter how hard I try to stay focused on the task at hand, I just... can't believe anything what's happening. It doesn't feel right. I was quickly snapped out my thoughts when I heard the rat hat noise and made my cherry's shoes skipping delightfully too close towards us. My first instinct was to hide, but there was barely any good spots in this room. I have to make sure Strawberry is safe too. I can't predict what Cherry might do at the moment. Maybe hiding you both is the bad route? Hide you both? Me and Strawberry crammed together hiding as quietly as we could inside of the closet. It was the only option I could think of with such a little time. Oops. Inquiry? What are you doing with my sister? The cherry witch grabbed the collar of my shirt, making me out of our hiding place. You! Get away from here, you disgusting pervert! Hey, wait a minute. Pervert, no, cherry! Before I could explain my peace, Cherry continued her scolding in my face. I thought I knew you! I thought you were nice! We were hiding from you! I can't let you hurt a child, Cherry. Cherry? Strawberry peeked her head out of the closet, to which Cherry Pie immediately hopped in front of her in a defensive position. Hurt a child? Hurt my sister? Everything I've done for her is done for her! Protect her! I can't let her grow up alone with no help like I had to! Our parents, they used up all of our magic to keep us alive, Inquiry. They gave up everything. For us. All I had was my sister. I would do anything to keep her from harm, even that means I have to kill you too. Wait. Sherry didn't hesitate in the slightest. Before I knew it, forty vines were trapping my very form. With one suffocating painful crunch, I felt a life drain from my body. Ending 5 out of 6. Sisterly love. Hide Strawberry. I adjusted my grip on Strawberry, hoist her up into a nearly empty cupboard overhead. Miss Inquiry? Without hesitation, I had my communicator over to Strawberry. I lifted the finger up to the girl as a gesture we need to be quiet. Carefully, I whispered up at her. Okay, kiddo. I got a favor to ask you. I know this is really scary, and I promise it'll all be over really soon. Cherry's gonna come in here, and I might be taken away. Once it's safe and she's far away from this room, you press the top red button on that thing I gave you, alright? It'll track your location and call my buddies at the council for help. Do you understand? Strawberry shakily nodded, trying to hold back tears. Hey kiddo. I promise, everything's going to be alright. I tried to put a calm and comforting face on for Strawberry, as so I closed the cupboard doors. Truth be told, I... I don't have time to think of a plan. Cherry's gonna be here any minute, and... Speak of the devil. Oh, he appears. Bonk. What do I do? What to do with you? I love you, but you try to escape. But I love you, but... Slowly getting consciousness in a room I'd entered more than ever. I saw an erratic cherry witch mumbling to herself in front of me. Of course I was tied up with many, many vines. Too many vines if I'm being frank. 
Why did you do it? I'm trying to help you. Why won't you just listen to me? I stayed silent, still mentally processing the last... How long I've been here. Uh, I don't feel good. Sherry knelt over, looking as if she were about to puke. You okay? Yeah, I... This happens... S sometimes. Uh, 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 not, not, not to worry, my love. I've made sure to lock up the shop. Nothing can interrupt us now. I promise, my darling. I won't let you get out of my sight ever again. Bonk. A crash was heard beyond Cherry. Flashing lights glared into my eyes. Voices I recognized called out my name. She did it. She did it. There was so much chaos of spells flying back and forth, it smelled like a mix of ice and burnt ash all at once. Very unpleasant. Get your hands off of me. I heard Cherry scream. I looked up to see her struggling to fight a beam of light that didn't capture her form completely. It did take long after that for my buddies to pry me out of those vines and bring me out of that nightmare. I should be happy. I escaped right. I got a member of the Everlasting. And there's probably more information down there that could help the Council of Witches. But honestly, I'm just so tired. Every time I look for answers, I have a running a wild goose chase or severely scarred by what I find. I'm tired. I just want to go to a cafe and enjoy a nice slice of pie. I didn't ask for any of this. Strawberry. Wait, you can't take me away. I heard Cherry Pie's protest as she was escorted out of the hidden part of the building. I have a sister I need to take care of. Please, you can't do this. Strawberry, sweetheart, there you are. You know I never hurt you, right? Right? Except for that claw thing. Strawberry suddenly cowered behind me, clinging to the back of my sleeve. Strawberry? My heart ached for Cherry, truthfully. I still can't wrap my head around that girl. My head also ached from, well, everything. But nothing could compare to the hurt I felt when I looked back at that little girl. She looked at me with the saddest expression as two of my buddies took her aside to talk with her. Kiddo. She really is a sweet gal. She's gonna be all alone now, isn't she? Alright, Miss Inquiry, thank you so much for signing all the paperwork in such a timely manner. I'll be sure to bring her out right away. I think the receptionist wiping my swinny hands off my pants the second she turned around. At first I was uncertain if I should do this. I mean, I never dealt too much with kids before. But then, when I saw that kid walk into the room, safe and in one piece, it finally clicked in my brain. The relief. The joy. Miss Inquiry, what are you doing here? I believe I owe someone a tall glass of lemonade, don't I? Her smell lit up the room. I couldn't help but want to protect it. Is that really so bad? If being a parent means wanting to protect a kid more than anything in this world, I don't think I'll do too shabby. Huh. Strawberry ran towards me once she realized I was here for a fun reason. Have your arms around me? I leaned down lower to give the kid a big friendly squeeze. Hey, Miss Inquiry, Miss Inquiry, I did it! I pushed the button like you said! You did good, kid. I'm so proud of you. You had to deal with a lot of hard stuff lately. Rest assured, I'll be watching over you now. Wait, does this mean... Yep, kiddo. As of two minutes ago, you're officially my kiddo. I ruffled her hair playfully as her laughter filled the very air. Yay, does that mean I get to live with you, Miss Inquiry? Yep, you're stuck with me. Unless you, well, you don't want to go with me, that is. No, no, I want to go with you. I want lemonade. You know, the reality of what this girl went through hasn't completely hit her yet. I knew when it did, it would hit hard. She doesn't deserve to be alone for all this, you know. I... I want to be there to support her. Having that realization, I just felt like this was right. Head in hand, I said right then, no matter what. The where she goes or who she wants to be. I would always love my little berry witch. Ending 606. True ending. And then the berry witch would go on to suffer hugely at the hands of a certain YouTuber. So, that's it for Cherry Witched. It's a bit of a different see I mean, it's more of an adventure game than the Berry Witched was. While Berry Witched was, you know, kind of more traditional visual novel 
choose your, uh, choose your, choose your fate kind of game. And without spoiling Barry Witched, the nature of this story was more straightforward. Like, you know, it, it's a yandere, right? But despite yandere's being a fairly standard thing in popular culture nowadays, there's enough, like, charm and uniqueness of the setting there to kind of, like, differentiate a bit, make it a bit fun. And if this is a prequel, which I, I think it is, but, you know, I, I don't know, for all I know, witches all have, like, the same name, and, like, they're, they're, they're like, kind of like, uh, maybe, like, gems from Steven Universe, in a way. Where it's like, you're strawberry, you're strawberry, you're strawberry, you're strawberry. And, like, that's, they all have the same exact name. I don't know how this world works fully. But, once again, if it is a prequel, then, uh, man, there's something about those pies that, that run in the family. But yeah, good to see a, uh, I suppose, a continuation, not directly, but in a sense of, like, the world kind of being continued in a new game. Uh, this creator did make another new game I haven't played yet. Uh, that one's a little bit longer. I haven't had time to, like, go for two hour or plus long games for in a while. Uh, but hopefully my schedule frees up a bit and I can, like, start tapping into some of those. Anyway. So, if you guys want to play Cherry Witched, I'll see you guys later and take it easy.